let's go ahead and style our H1, our headline now. All right, so let's go back to our code. And let me just, before we, before we start on our headline, let me just point out that I went ahead and I added in two comments the uh, source for my hero image for the recipe. So, and you can go ahead and you can take a look at this. We'll just copy this real quick and we'll open a new tab. And this is the Wiki, Wikimedia Commons where I found the image. And then there's the information below and also the ability to download in different aspect ratios, the source, the author, and then the file for the license for um, Creative Commons. So if you were to click on this, this is your license, okay? And that is the link that I have right here, okay? So if you're using, even if you're using content that is in the, um, I should say royalty free, uh, be sure to follow the basic rules. Um, cite or quote the, uh, not quote, but cite the author. Make sure you provide a link to them or to the resource. And then often these different resources want you to create or, or want you to include a, um, a link, if you will, for the license. I've done so inside of a comment. So anything that you're using that isn't yours, make sure it's cited correctly. Make sure you're... Um, you're um, stating who the author is, and then the uh, Creative Commons license or whatever license that they that they're uh, dealing with. Just a good idea to do that. All right, so I'm going to get rid of these two, and now we're going to go back and begin styling our H1, our title. So let's go ahead and scroll our. CSS down here to the bottom. We ended, we uh, last added the header. So now it's time for our headline. So let's go ahead and paste our headline, or I should say our rule for our headline, and let's just tab these over so they are correct. Okay. Now, let's see what I have going here. Okay, so we're going to set the position for our H1. Okay, for our H1 here, we're going to set the position to relative. So what's going to happen is this element follows, the H1 follows the header. So the H1 is relative to the header. Okay, so keep that in mind. It's the flow of the document. One element follows the next. So in this case, our position is relative to the element which precedes it. So H1 is relative to the header. All right, so if we go back and now we're setting a width of 100%. So I'm just going to provide the entire block for this H1. We're going to set the minimum width to 950 like we did for a couple of the other elements, the, the um, navigation and also the header. So the width is 100%. The minimum width will be 950 again. Okay. So it, will, it, it can't get smaller. It can't squish the type and make the type go on two lines or something. The height will be auto. The height is going to automatically adjust by what is inside, in this case, our font, our title. The margin, you'll notice I'm using negative 150. So what we're going to do is we're going to make this element move up on top of our header. And we can move it down, we can move it to the sides, we can move it up, we can use positive, we could use negative numbers. You're just telling an element that's following one element that's relative to it to go up into it by um, whatever this negative number is, 150 pixels. We're going to set our right 
our bottom and our left margins at zero. And my padding will be zero, 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 and 30 on the left. So I'm gonna use padding to move the type in. Our font family, I have uh, Lolita One, so I'm using a Google font. So I'm gonna to have to go and uh, make sure I install my Google font, which we'll do here in a moment. And then our font size will be seven rem, so seven times 16, because our default is 16 right now. We're setting our color. Then I've added a link here, and you can go ahead and go to this, uh, to, uh, to this link, CSS Tricks. And this is um, how you could use a WebKit to add a stroke to your type. So I'm using WebKit, and we're, which is something that only newer browsers, so older browsers aren't going to, this is not gonna work. So no big deal, it would just do a fallback and we wouldn't have a stroke on our type, no problem. So we're gonna set the stroke to one pixel. Let's uh, get rid of this extra space here. And we're gonna set the stroke color to black. Okay, I had a border of one pixel solid and white. I did this just so I could see where things were when I was moving them around or moving the headline around. So I commented out this border. I tend to put borders on elements as I'm moving them around so I can see the actual block element, okay? Or inline block element. I can see where it is and how it's behaving. Now I should point out with our margin, being negative 150 on the top. If you recall, we added at the very beginning in like the second video probably, we added uh, the universal selector and the box sizing border box. So this universal selector adds the CSS3 box model to all of the HTML elements. So we don't have to add box sizing in each case that we're working with our margin. This automatically adds box sizing to every element in the um, CSS document. All right, so let's go ahead and add our Google font. I don't believe I've added it. Let's take a look. All right, no, my Google font, oh, I'm so used to scrolling up in the HTML document. Let's go ahead and stuff for the head here. Let's just add our Google font. And you remember how to do this. Just go to uh, fonts.google.com and then search for your font that you want to use and then go ahead and get your embed code like we've done in previous uh, demos. All right, so we have our link for our Google font. So let's go ahead and save and close. And then we will save here again. Let's just scroll down and take a look at our headline. So what should happen is we should have a really large headline. We should have a nice background color. We'll have a stroke that is one pixel in black. And then what you're going to see is our font should be moved up into this area up here. So let's go ahead and refresh. And of course, we'll have to scroll down. And there is our font, okay? Now you notice this other content, it's gonna move up too, all right? And it's going to hit the bottom of our, of our header. So this, keep in mind that this element, this headline, we've moved this up with negative 150 uh, pixels. And that's how we are getting this type to move up into this, uh, in, into this image. And we could move it to this side, we could move it up even further. It's just now what's happening is since we are moving this up, the other content is going to, um, we're, we're gonna have to make it work with us also okay when i say work with us we're going to have to think about how we're moving elements around because the elements that follow um, are going to uh, be affected to a degree okay so just keep that in mind all right so let's see what is next here i believe what we're going to do next 
is we're going to deal with the main element. Okay, so we'll style in the next video, we'll begin styling the main element, which holds all of our recipe information.